supporters to have specific jobs to be supporting immigrant workers. We have a ride share network, we have a court accompaniment network, we involve people in the day to day work of supporting organizers. Um, and we're honored to have Jose Martinez as one of our board members and a worker member with us. Um, and I don't know if you want to describe a little bit about of the work that you're doing right now around farm worker organizing or around with the communities. <coughs> and it's been in North I'm not translating from because this English is actually quite good for understanding what I might translate. <coughs> <laughs> um, actualmente en el Centro Obrero estamos en una campaña de ayudar a principalmente a la gente que trabaja en el campo. Right now, in the Workers' Center, we're working hard um, on a campaign specifically to be working with people, work, uh, farm workers. La campaña no 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 es fácil, pero hemos tenido una actividad, creo yo, muy importante. It's not an easy campaign, but we recently had a, an activity that I think was very important. Como comunidad trabajadora del campo. Hay muchas cosas que, por las que la gente sufre y pasa mucho trabajo. Um, for the community that works in our farms, there are so many things that people suffer and also that, <coughs> como que sufren y, y, oh, and they also, people work really, really hard. Uh, en el centro obrero, um, uh, básicamente, uh, yo, yo lo veo como una familia. I see the worker center is like a family. Una familia que, que te ayude, te ayuda, o te ayuda en casi cualquier cosa que tú necesites saber o, o hacer. In almost everything that you need to know or do. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nosotros dos, we're really both part of that. Sí, um, I know. I mean, I think, you know, we can talk about some of the specific things from workers' One of the space, things that, I wonder. that immediately jumps out at me is the fact that uh, in, I'm, I'm writing about a period of, uh, over 100 years ago where the issues are the same. Mm -hmm. The immigrant workers who have been exploited, right. you have um, uh, the endless tricks that the, because they have no power, they can be, their wages can be stolen. Uh, it, those of us of a certain age will remember Tennessee uh, 24 and 16 tons. Oh, and, uh, they, those trams would be uh, short weighted. They would tell you that you know here's our here's the price for what you load, right? Okay. But then they would tell you that it wasn't the, the full weight, or uh, they would lower the, the the floors of the trams so that you had to you had to fill them higher in order to fill them. And one of the things that comes up is that the need to be to have translators all the time. What the women's auxiliary was able to do was that they had the daughters who grew up in America, and so they would sit and they would do what you're doing. They would, they would listen and they would say, and translate this thing. Right? Annie arranged a uh, to have a um, a translation committee. Mm -hmm. It's always a committee. <laughs> we always have, we also have that. And yeah, yeah exactly. And it would, it, so that all of the flyers could be translated into each one of the, of the languages. Um, and uh, and she recognized that that was one of the ways that the that the corporation kept workers down was to encourage things that kept them apart. So everybody had their own churches. Everybody had all of these different ethnic groups had different churches. Yeah. And uh, they would uh, they had different cemeteries. They never would uh, let you know how many people had died that week, so that you just couldn't ever bring it together. And Annie was the one who went over the records, going, "Wait a minute, this is this is so many more men than I thought." Exactly. So her her way of getting people to understand that was to stand up at a meeting and say, "What's the price of copper? What's the price of tomatoes?" What's the right. price of you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. And people would answer her, well, it, you know, it's 15 and a half cents a pound. And she'd say, no, what is the price of cost? Of cost? Right. What does it cost? 
and people began to answer, my father, my brother, my first son, my husband. And she then just read the names of the men who had died over the, just the past few years, and it was hundreds. Wow. Uh, so it, it, those kinds of things where you just, you're, you're being divided, and, and that weakens you, and that's why union is important. Right? One of the things I really love uh, are the corporate efforts to explain to workers why it's having a union is against their interests. <laughs> They're spending millions of dollars to tell you how you don't want that. If it's that useless to you, why are they working that hard to make you not want to unionize? You know? Right, right. <laughs> so it's, it, I, I just found, it, it, this book starts out, you know, it was supposed to be an homage. It was supposed to be uh, a thank you note to the women who had done all this work hundred years ago. And now it's like a how-to. Yeah, you know, it's, right? It's like Same book. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. What do you think Annie would say to people now who work in different places who are trying to fight back against this? It is really, really tough. And yeah, they will, I think what Ella Blore said is, is really important. They will fight you. Mm -hmm. And you have to fight back. You have to just never give up. You have to. You, it's important to understand that they're not going to give you anything. They won't be reasonable. They won't just be decent. They are, you know, that's like, that's for church. <laughs> you want decent? Go to church. And, and in fact, Calumet uh, City had the highest number of churches of any city in the United States in 1910. He liked churches. McNaughton wanted everybody going to church. Uh, and uh, that kind of decency and love and you know cooperation and help and all of that stuff, that's, that's church stuff. This is business. Um, he, McNaughton truly believed that once he had money, no one should ever have any claim on it. So he was against taxation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's all the same. That's what gobsmacks me is that it's all the same stuff. But we also know that over a period of thirty years of relentless activity, uh, we did get laws through. Mm -hmm. um, in the nineteen thirties and the nineteen forties, things were better. Roosevelt was better. One good thing that may have come out of the, uh, the current political climate is that it's naked now. Mm -hmm. They're not hiding their contempt for immigrants. They're not hiding their contempt for people who work for them. Mm -hmm. They're not hiding their uh, unwillingness to be part of the, the community. They're building safe houses, and they're, you know, Amazon. George Bezos, okay? Just got a divorce. His wife, in its community property state, California, so she got half. She walked away with $36 billion. And she said she was going to give half of it away visions of guillotines are dancing in her head and all that. Um, half. She gives away $17 billion. She still has $17 billion. You, she could spend a million dollars a day until the sun went out. And she would never get, you know, what do you do with that kind of money? And why do they have it? Because they're, for years, he has treated his warehouse workers like right. And so, you know, it's to me, every billionaire is a policy failure. <laughs> every <laughs> single billionaire. If you, if you don't, if you, a thousand million. I was, what I, what I, what I'm really wondering is, how did you come upon this story of, of the Copper Country and uh, the strike and, uh, yeah, and I, I'm I, sure. I, I watched the, way too much television. Uh, it was a, a PBS uh, Done, I saw it in 2014. It was done as the 100th anniversary for 20, uh, of, in 2013. 
of the copper strike. And it, it's it's big news up in the UP. Yeah. You know, people, everybody, you know, UPers know about this. And right. it, 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 it divides, here's the other thing, it divides the city to this day. <laughs> Cal, Calumet is still, they will tell you that Annie was that bitch, she, she, she ruined everything. Yeah. And and those people don't realize that McNaughton was, was going to dump half the workers. He was bringing in one-man drills. To his, he, he was delighted with the people who left town and went to, uh, to make cars for uh, in Detroit for Henry Ford. That was fine. Get lost. Because uh, he wanted to, to uh, uh, bring the, uh, uh, the workforce down by 50%. Uh, and the same kind of thing. Solomon Cristo, my, my girlfriend's great friend, grandfather, was a non-union man, and he had volunteered to take one of the one-man drills, and was completely ostracized by everybody else yeah. in the country, in the, in the city. So yeah, to this day, the uh, the strike divides people. So you know, and I'm and I'm always aware of the fact that there are both sides, there are many sides to each one of these stories, and I I try to be fair. To uh, God help us, you can't use the term fair and balanced anymore because that means lying your ass off. But I try to be fair to both sides. I try to think if somebody, you know, if McNaughton's granddaughter wrote, read this book, would she feel that I had accurately portrayed him? And so I use quotes wherever I can. I take it right out of the, out of the, the records and, and try to be as, as uh, honest as I can about named individuals. Well, thank you for your your observation about keeping people divided because uh, it, that was still the, the way and when I was uh, a child and growing up you know, yeah. everybody had their own church and they, they still spoke their own language in church and mm -hmm. uh, and it was tough but I had a friend we had a friend who was going to write a book about the mine and he called it the dirty deep mm -hmm. and they go down half a mile you know and, oh, yeah. uh, and there'd be Italians and Slavs and in the Swedes.